On this episode of Georgia Traveler, we're driving down Highway 575 from Jasper to Cartersville in search of family fun, a place to sleep, a place to eat, and a great outdoor activity. And don't forget the local legend. Coming up next on Georgia Traveler. Georgia Traveler is made possible in part by. Few places on earth match Georgia for natural beauty, and we plan to keep it that way. We're Georgia Power, a proud sponsor of public broadcasting. We're on so you can be Georgia Power, a Southern company. And by supporters of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you. We begin this episode of Georgia Travelers here in Jasper at the Woodbridge Inn Restaurant and Lodge. The inn was built shortly after the Civil War and operated as the Lenning Hotel well into the 20th century. But it was christened the Woodbridge Inn before current owners Joe and Brenda Ruford purchased the property in 1967. It was the people prior to us here, even once before that, who, who named it the Woodbridge Inn because there was always a wooden bridge here. The wooden bridge had its 100 year anniversary over, over five years ago. I thought it was just a wonderful sounding name, the Woodbridge Inn, so we kept it. The first part of the success Joe and Brenda have experienced was through the restaurant. Well, I think my visions at first were pretty much just survival. Just trying to make it in a restaurant business. And just having made it and uh, being here now for 30 years is a great, great satisfaction to me. My background is German. I was born and raised in Germany and I came to the United States in 1964, expecting everything out of the world. And here I am and I got everything in the world. We serve a mainly American continental cuisine. We are heavy on game. We are known for having German portions, I mean they're large portions. German, German kitchen is known for giving enough to eat. Although reservations aren't absolutely necessary, don't come to Woodbridge hungry on a Monday. On Mondays we are closed. On Tuesday we serve dinner only from uh, 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. On Wednesday we serve lunch and then we serve dinner. Thursday we serve dinner, Friday from 5 to 9, Saturday 5 to 9, and Sunday we serve lunch only. When the preacher says amen, that's when they come in here for the Sunday meal. We are known for fresh food, and food has been cooked to order. So when you come into our restaurant here, I don't even know what you're gonna eat. So the waiter's gonna find out, you're gonna come in the kitchen and say, he wants this and this, and then we start from scratch, we can cook your food then. So this is very important to us, that the freshness and the cook to order food, this is so important. Also important to the roofers are the accommodations they offer. We got 18 rooms, there's usually one or two queen size beds in there and they have all the modern uh, amenities you, you would expect in a hotel room. Then we have also four small houses, it used to be kind of one family houses that we have purchased and that we have fixed it. So we have some beautiful rooms that overlook the mountains, we have a beautiful swimming pool that goes with it. So it's, it's all nature, it's all, all the noise is buffeted out of this area here. You don't hear anything from the, from the city traffic or anything else. It's quiet, it's peaceful. It's obvious that Joe takes a great deal of pride in everything he does. In addition to owning and operating the Woodbridge Inn, he is also a marble artist. This is my hobby. I love to do things with marble. Every one, every one of my napkins in the dining room are held together by a napkin ring. Every table have a vase made out of marble, has a candle holder made out of marble. So I just think it's marvelous. <laughs> we got three colors of marble here. We got the Cherokee white, the monument, 
Lincoln Monument in Washington is made out of that. Then we got the Creole black and white. And then we have pink, that is Etowah pink. So those are the three marbles that we have here. Of all the things to see, do, and eat here at the Woodbridge Inn, nothing was more fascinating to me than Joe's creations with native marble. Now here in Pickens County, there's a pink marble mansion just down the road in Tate. Pickens County's path through history is paved with marble. Discovered in the 1830s by an Irish immigrant named Henry Fitzsimmons, the vein of marble running through the county is some of the purest found in the United States. At that time, the Tate family had already bought property where marble was found. And although the Tate family didn't get involved in quarrying and running the operation, they leased their land as early as 1850 for very small marble operations to begin. Once the popularity of Georgia marble grew, the Tate family decided to begin mining operations themselves, and from that, the Georgia Marble Company was born. It later went on to supply marble to such places as the Lincoln Memorial, the New York Stock Exchange, and Emory University. Sam Tate had an area of, uh, that he wanted to quarry, and he discovered this beautiful pink stone that he named Etowah Marble. He knew he wanted to do something special with it. It wasn't a large vein, but there was a good bit of it. So he um, was deciding on what can I do to really showcase Georgia marble. And Mr. Walker of the Cleveland Museum had come down and he said, you should build your own home out of this beautiful rose-colored stone when it will just be spectacular. The example that Colonel Sam was trying to illustrate was the use of structural marble in a classical building with the very large columns and to show the uses and the attractiveness and the longevity of marble in a building like this. It took over two years for this building to be constructed. It's a beautiful example of a classical home with the use of uh, all of the marble found within a few hundred feet of this house. These columns, for example, they were actually carved for the White House in Washington. And they were made too short. And so they had to redo them. So these columns were destined for Washington, but they wound up being part of the Tate House. The Mann family, who are the current owners, used the home to hold special events and to give visitors a chance to explore this historic dwelling. Hey, I'm Keely. Hi, I'm Marcia Mann. Welcome to the Tate House. Thank you, thank you. Would you like to come in? Absolutely, I want to oh. check it out. Oh wow, this is nice. Yes, this is the formal living room. Mm -hmm. Has black walnut paneling, marble floors, and a marble fireplace. Beautiful. All the rooms this pretty? Yes. Let's yes. check them out. All right. And what room is this? This is the library. Also, it has the black walnut paneling. Uh -huh. This was Luke Tate's office. We have a portrait of Sam Tate here. That's a copy of the life-size portrait that's at the elementary school that he built. Right. It's beautiful. Thank Let's you. Move on. All right. This is the main staircase. Uh -huh. It meets the hallways in the main house where there's a different entrance on the end of each hallway to okay. showcase marble. The architects built the styles in different um, version to, to show the versatility of marble. Oh, okay. We have the Georgian side out here, the English courtyard side, Mediterranean, and behind us is the Italian side. Ooh, let's check that out. All right. This is pretty. What makes this Italian? It's Italian because of the double staircase and the fountain. Mm -hmm. And we have our new ballroom we've just added, 4,000 square feet 
Uh, we primarily do weddings here now. Well, thank you for the tour. You're it was welcome. A good time. Thank it's a you. Beautiful house. You're welcome. From the legendary Tate House to some legendary barbecue, David and Phil are on the road just south of here near Fallground. Man, Phil, I can't believe you forgot to fill up the gas tank. Hey man, how did I know? I thought the reserve tank was bigger. It's not. Who knew? I'm hungry. Well, we are in ball ground, and you know what? There's a great place, Two Brothers Barbecue. It's legendary. Been around Two since, Brothers? Yeah, it's called Two Brothers. No, Been no, no. Since not... Two Brothers. Oh, Barbecue. Yeah. Hey, uh, Two Brothers. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait. I better let them know you're coming first so they can get prepared. They got a lot of stuff they got to do. That's fine. Let them know I'm coming. <laughs> Bob, watch <like> you. <laughs> you must be Randy. I'm uh, David. David, good to meet you. Well, I've heard about Two Brothers Barbecue here, but I want to warn you, my, my buddy Phil, I've held him at bay down the road a little bit, but he eats a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll see if we can help him out. All right, good. Well, tell me what y'all do to get prepared. Will you take me in the kitchen? Sure. Come on back. Well, this right here, we just have got ribs that have come off. Surely we, we can settle in with those, can All right. <laughs> we got homemade coleslaw, we make, make it right here. Right over here, we have our uh, pan cut french fries, we do here, and chopped barbecue pork. Okay. And we do uh, sandwiches, uh, barbecue plates. I think we got this place prepared for Phil. What do you think? I hope so. All right, well, uh, I think I hear him coming. Barbecue! Now while they get my food ready, I decided I wanted to learn a little bit more about Two Brothers. So I am here with the original Two Brothers. This is Ken, this is Grady. Fellas, how's it going today? It's fine. I know y'all are Two Brothers. Did y'all sit down and just discuss that? Or did you just, did somebody throw it at you? How my did daughter, you do it? My daughter, come Your daughter? Yeah. The first weekend we opened, we cooked and sold everything we had. We had to go buy some more ham and start cooking again. And it just got better and better every week. Two Brothers was originally a convenience store run by Grady and Kenneth's father, but you can still see a few of the original store items lined along the walls, which fit right in with the sawdust floors and the pulled pork barbecue on the table. I have customers that can come in and tell me about you. They used to come in and, and purchase stuff from my grandfather and grandmother. How long have you been here? This March will be 32 years. And what's kept you here for 32 years? People, we have such loyal, loyal um, patrons that come in, nice people, you know, community. Um, it's just been good to me. It's been good for me. Well, it's been here a long time, and uh, people in the community have known forever. They're good people. They have good food, and we're proud of them. That's probably some of the best barbecue in North Georgia. Usually eat down here about once a week on Fridays, and uh, lived here all my life, and been eating here for probably 20 years. So the kitchen was ready for Phil and I to order. Well, at least I think they were ready for my order. Okay, here's what I want. Okay. I want seven chickens. I think I should get eight. Eight? Eight? Yeah, I'll make it eight. Okay. okay. And a big bucket of fries. And a big bucket of fries. Okay, how about fries, right? Two slabs of ribs. Two slabs? Right. Small Brunswick stew. Okay. Does that, does that cover it all? I think you got... need some garlic toast. Garlic Texas toast for those ribs. Okay, go ahead and put that on there too. Okay. Coleslaw? Coleslaw for you? Uh, yeah, I'll take that too. Oh, okay. All right. Anything else for you, fellas? No. No. Very good. Thank Maybe you. Some... We'll start with this. Okay? Extra napkins? Oh, sure. Get those for you. All right. Thank you. I'll be right out. Thank you. Hungry? Just a little bit. So when you're in ball ground at Two Brothers Barbecue, I'll tell you one thing, you've got to try the coleslaw. It's great. Coleslaw? Yeah. David, Two Brothers is about the barbecue. Oh, that does look good. Move over, coleslaw. Man, Phil, that Two Brothers Barbecue filled me up. You? You want seconds, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna change shirts because I got barbecue sauce all over this one, and head west to the Red Top Mountain Iron Pour and Archaeology Day. Just west of Interstate I-75, you'll find Red Top Mountain State Park and Lodge. The Red Top Mountain Archaeology Day and Iron Pour begins bright and early with a hay wagon tour of the iron mine.
Bartow County has a lot of iron ore. And after the Treaty of 1835, the, 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 because this was Cherokee land, the settlers started moving in and that's when the iron industry really started, was after 1840. We're gonna take you back to our iron mine. This was all, this whole area was known as Iron Hill back in the 1800s and it was an active iron mining community. There were about six or seven mines here on the park. We have one that still you're able to walk into and it is absolutely spectacular. When I came to this park, um, I was amazed at how actually red the soil was. And I learned that that was from the iron content in the ground. The, the iron leaches out the color and stains the clay here and it is unbelievably red. And that's the name Red Top Mountain. We have Erin Timms with us sitting here in the middle and she is an archaeologist that showed up out here for our Hills of Iron program and agreed to come back and talk to you guys for Archaeology Day. If we go through here, one of the things you'll see is there's a lot of red iron exposed throughout the hills. They actually did have a stamping plant in this area that was used for breaking down the rock. The operations of the furnaces that were around here required that they needed iron ore, they needed charcoal, they needed fuel. That's one of the reasons why you would have an iron community pop up, was based on the resources in the area. The day continues with an archaeology lecture on what archaeology is and the origins of mankind. From those artifacts, figure out what kind of lives the people who made these and used these and eventually threw them away might have lived. Soon after that, kids participate in an archaeological dig. We mysteriously acquired some arrowheads here and I had a little plot and they'll be able to dig and sift out their dirt and keep their treasures to take home. As night falls, the cauldron begins to heat up and the bluegrass band gets rolling. It's very heavy work and it's hot and it's dirty, but this furnace transforms from a big piece of steel into almost a living, breathing creature. Um, it takes on a life of its own. We'll have flames coming out of the top of the furnace anywhere from two to five feet high. And when, the, when we tap the furnace, we'll have about 70 to 90 pounds of molten iron coming out of the furnace at one time into the uh, ladle. Uh, so it's just more spectacular at night whenever you see the fire and the flame. For just a few bucks, kids and adults can prepare an iron mold out of a sandstone block using whatever tools they can dig up to scratch their masterpiece. Don't ask me why that's in there. <laughs> now this is my artwork. This is a Georgia peach, and if you look at Georgia up top here, the G is backwards. That's because when you pour the iron in, it's going to come out inverted. I watched closely as the skilled iron workers completed my masterpiece, filling it with scorching iron ore, tossing it in the sand, cooling it in the water, and finally letting it smoke on the table. And when it was safe to touch, I boasted a beautiful iron Georgia peach. Smoking. You would have thought this was done by a 10-year-old, but no, it was done by me. So if you plan on traveling near Red Top Mountain, check your calendar for the next iron pour because I guarantee it's the hottest show in town. From a hot show to a cool, refreshing outdoor activity, Phil and I are headed to another location on Lake Alatoona. Kimmy, we are at the end of our journey of Highway 575 here at beautiful Lake Alatoona. That's right. I think I'm going to try to learn how to water ski. Why don't you jet ski? Sounds good to me. All right, let's go. Hey, Scott. Hey, I'm Keely. This is Phil. How you doing, Phil? Good dog. How you doing? Good, buddy. All right. You? All right, guys. We're ready to get on the water, aren't we? That's right. We're going to start out with most important life jackets. Okay. You guys have your life jackets. We'll size you up, make sure they fit perfectly later. OK? okay. Y'all are going on the ski boat, the deck boat, correct? That's right. All right. We're going to try and do some skiing. You want to do some skiing? That's what I want to do. Never ski, right. want to ski. Ah, perfect. What about you? Want to get on tube? Okay, I got one waiting right here for you. 
Wait, wait a minute, Scott. Am I going to fit in that tube? I you will definitely myself. fit in this tube. Okay, you're the man. You know what you're doing. <laughs> all right. We're going to do some wakeboarding later. we got some wakeboards. Okay. And then we've got all our types of skis, which you can hop on, all the way from right. infants all the way up to adults. So, all right, I'm ready. You guys ready to go? Ready. Well, you let's go, go get, get ready. Yeah, go get change. We'll hop on the deck boat. Most people get in the water and start out on the skis. Okay. You're holding on to your rope. Mm -hmm. You've got two ways you can hold up. One palm down, one palm up. Okay. Or your standard, both palms down. Okay. All right, two ways of holding. What's More the of your professionals Professional. like to hold it like this. That's not me. When you're amateur, we'll go with the palms okay. down. Okay. Okay, pretty simple. Okay. All right, you always want to have your rope in between your legs when okay. you start out. Right now, we're sitting in the water. Okay. okay, visualize the boat right in front of you sitting in the water. Mm -hmm. The rope's going right in between your skis. Your ski's okay. going to be pointing straight. Oh, but look, I'm pointing out. I want to have my feet straight, right? You want to have your feet straight. Your knees are going to be slightly bent, kind of sitting in the water. Okay. 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 Once that happens, you're going to give a signal to the driver. Okay. You're ready to go. Thumbs up. Tap your head. Wave. Let's ride. Okay. The driver starts to get the slack out of the rope. Once the slack gets out of the rope, he's going to gun it. And you're going to slowly ease yourself up, let the boat pull you up is the trick. Okay. Hop in. Hop in. How's the water? It's not bad. It feels good, doesn't it? It does definitely take persistence. Sometimes you can't get up on the first try. It takes a little bit of time. The more times you try it, the more you're gonna get used to it, and you're gonna get the feel of the skis, the feel of the power of the boat, and the feel of just getting up out of the water. So, it takes a little bit of persistence. Once you get up, it's definitely worth it. Some of the tips, you always wanna keep your, your knees kinda slightly bent. You don't wanna lock them out. As you're getting up out of the water, the more you resist, the harder it's going to be. The boat has plenty of power. It's got 190 horsepower, so it's got plenty of power. It's going to pull you straight out of the water. See a professional do it. Not only can Scott water ski, he's also quite adept at wakeboarding. Now that's just showing off. You know, besides skiing and wakeboarding, there's all kinds of fun you can have with a boat on the water. Let's try tubing! Oh, that had to hurt. As fun as tubing can be, you're still at the mercy of the driver. And I think it's time for me to do a little driving on my own. Okay, Keely did a great job with water skiing, but now it's time for me to try something I've never done, wave running. Scott. How you doing, man? Man, you did a great job coaching Keely. Well, thank you. Thank Can you, you help me? Now we're going to coach Harry. Okay. You, your turn. All right. Ready to hop on the wave runner. personal watercraft, PWC. The PWC? That's right. Okay. Watch now, your step. Uh, now, Scott, I heard a lot of, you said PWC, personal watercraft. I also heard of wave runner. I've heard of... What was the Sea Dudes? Uh, I've heard jet, uh, jet skis, skis. Sea Dudes, Wave Runners, <laughs> Yamaha or Wave Runners. It's, they're all under the title of a PWC, a personal watercraft. All right, Scott, what is this little thing here? This little thing is called a lanyard. Um, what happens is if this were to come out, this disengages the motor. Okay? Oh, okay. Simple as that. All right, you always want to make sure it's on your wrist, on your life jacket. It just has to be on you somewhere. Okay, well. Okay, pretty easy. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it on my wrist. All right, there you the go. The way I can keep up with it. All okay. Right. All right, what do we got here? What else I need to know? Before we start going over controls and everything, there's one important thing you always want to make sure. One, your life jacket. Your life jacket's good. You're fit. You're ready to go. I do fit. You do fit. All right. Let's go over with the basics. Here's your start button right here, this green button. Mm -hmm. you, that's what you use to start the unit. Right below here is your stop button. All right. Okay. Right here is your throttle. That's what makes you go forward and reverse. You've got your handlebars right here. Okay. Right is right, left is left. So it's just like a car. Any other questions? 
No, I think I'm ready to I think get you're started. Ready to yeah, okay. I'm excited. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna push you off. Okay. Okay, wait till I get you in the water, then hit the start button. All right, we'll go ahead and don't forget about your reverse. You can put it in reverse to get yourself out. next episode of Georgia Traveler, but until then, I'm Phil Proctor. I'm Keely Muse, wishing you pleasant journey. Now hit it, Scott! Georgia Traveler is made possible in part by... Few places on Earth match Georgia for natural beauty, and we plan to keep it that way. We're Georgia Power, a proud sponsor of public broadcasting. We're on so you can be Georgia Power, a Southern company. And by supporters of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you. Georgia Traveler is produced in partnership with the Georgia Department of Economic Development and the Georgia Tourism Foundation. This has been a production of Georgia Public Broadcasting.